What a play as a tour bot's tail, but it's my thanks for joining me for part two of part two of how to paint a high elf shadow warrior. Now, what we did today was highlight up the shirt, the cloak, the uh, leather, the whites, like everything, everything on this model. So the paints you'll need are as follows. Calador Sky, Cantor Blue, Rune Fang Steel, Gehenna's Gold, Ceramite White, Wild Rider Red. Oh, where are all my other reds? Corn Red. And let's see if I can find my Mephiston Red around here somewhere. Here we go. Mephiston Red. Carrack Stone. Bard Coat. What else? Is there anything else? I think that might be it. Sorry if I missed anything. Oh yeah, the the blues. Hello. Uh, so we used Thunderhawk Blue. We used Fenrisian Gray. And uh, we also went back to the original color of Dark Reaper. If I can find that. I can't seem to find it. If You've got Dark Reaper. Ah, here we go. Dark Reaper. So once your washes have dried, you're gonna come back and paint all these areas and do some highlighting. So uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. And did I miss one? I think I might have missed Othuan Gray and Celestia Gray. Ah, well, uh, you can check it out in the video. Thanks for watching. Latest players. All right, you guys, let's get started with part two. So, first color we're going to use is Triad Bark. For most videos, you're going to find that I, <clears throat> I like to start highlighting with the base color. That's because the shades, or the, yeah, the shades really help you to pick out the, the darker areas, but you wanna usually go back over and bring the color back up. I'm looking for all the areas that the light is hitting and reflecting nicely off of. color we're going to highlight with is Steel Legion Drab. I'm going to continue highlighting these darker areas. So now we're going to be actually getting into a little bit of edge highlighting. That's when you take the paint, kind of put it on the edge of your brush, and you're really looking for where the light is hitting the material. So from where I'm sitting, there are these very definite lines in the gloves. So that's where I am paint that. The trim here, or the edge actually, of the boots. And here, right at the knee. And down here by the foot. When I'm doing this kind of highlighting, what I found is really helpful is to feather the paint a lot. And that just means kind of lightly doing small short strokes to blend the paint. You don't want any definite obvious 
strokes as much as possible. You want to hide, hide your uh, brush strokes, and doing short little, little strokes like that that tease the paint out off the tip of your brush works really well. Okay, let me just make sure that the camera is capturing that. Also, you definitely do not want too much paint on your brush. The more paint is on your brush, the more likelihood, or the more likely it is, the higher the likelihood that you'll get too much paint onto the model. And it's kind of like an obvious thing, but that's something you definitely don't want. Right, and the last part here is the quiver on the back. The whole purpose of highlighting is to kind of draw the eye towards the raised areas and to differentiate where the uh, recessed areas are. There we go. Let that dry for a bit and we're gonna go on to highlighting the cloak. Okay, so I got my Dark Reaper here. And we're gonna come right back. And I'm gonna teach you how I like to highlight cloth. I might do a, a Take 5 with the War Boss series on this later, but I'm just kind of taking the paint and again, feathering it just like I did with the boots. And the trick is, if you'll notice, most color schemes kind of hold up from far away, but when you get close up to looking at a model, you can really tell where the paint strokes are, the brush strokes rather. And I think the you know the best way to tell how good someone is as as a painter, not only is it uh, I think it's like a combination of choosing the right colors and being able to blend as seamlessly as possible. So that's kind of what I'm kind of practicing to doing. And in order to do that, we do short, short strokes that will get whatever paint is on the tip of the brush onto the model, but won't like splatter on it. This is also where choosing the best colors or blending your colors is also going to come in handy. If you use a wet palette or a get a wet palette, you have really good control, or you will, because you'll be able to add your uh, color combinations for your mixtures in, you know, whatever amount you want, and you can really control how how bright or how smooth you want your transitions between the colors to be. So just like when I was doing the boots, I'm looking for where the, the light naturally hits the cloak at the angle that I like the most, and then I kind of paint to favor that angle. So it might not look good with, you know, if, if you're doing like a 360 view, you might find some angles where the light kind of hits the, the cloak a little bit unnaturally, but if you find the sweet spot, then it should look really, really nice. Okay, when painting the underside of the cloak or the inside, the lining, then we're just doing 
a little bit more careful with, we're, we're going to be a little bit more careful with our painting. You're going to see that I've painted this part right here just now. And then I thought, okay, this one area right there where that fold is, that's a nice shadow. So I'm going to keep that shadow and I'm going to paint just from this angle. So I'm not going to turn the model and paint in there. I'm just looking at it from this angle, wherever the light hits the lining of the cloak, the inside, that is where I'm going to paint my Dark Reaper. And there you have it. Conversely, we're going to be repainting Thunderhawk Blue onto the tunic. So again, we're just going back over the colors we did previously. And for the tunic, we're looking at the shirt here. And the sleeve. It's also a good idea to paint the uh, edges. So like where the sleeve cuts off right there. It's always good to put a little bit of a highlight right there. On this side, I'm looking to see where the light hits the sleeve naturally, and I'm going to just go and hit that part first and paint out from it. And just kind of feather my way around this bottom part of the sleeve. Here you go. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to paint some Cantor blue back on the trim. But this time, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a suggested highlight. So what that means is I'm going to look at different places where I want the eye to be drawn, like the tips or the points of both of these blue areas, and I'm going to pay, uh, pay special focus to those. I'm going to kind of leave the rest of the blue trim. The same goes for this top area. Can you just paint a little bit of a of a cantor blue right there and that's it. Next we're going to take Calidor Sky And we're going to paint the highlight even thinner and closer to the point. So I'm going to start right here, right under the medallion. I'm going to put just a little hint and then down here where it kind of tapers to a point. The uh, effect that we're going for, the goal, is that we want the Calador sky to look like right where the light is reflecting. And make it not so much like that as what the color is, but that is like the highlight color. And the final color that we're going to use for this blue is Teclas Blue. Kind of like how Games Workshop wanted to keep their, their paints kind of in the same same uh, ballpark by the naming conventions. So if you, you're doing like Lizardmen, then they've got like Skink Blue, Temple Guard Blue, um, and here with the High Elves, Teclas, Kalidor, kind of leads you to uh, what you are going to paint. Okay, before we move on, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Abaddon Black and we're going to paint 
the eye lenses of the masks, or the, I'm sorry, not the lenses, the little eye holes. We're also going to paint the gems, any gems on the model. So here's a gem right on the helmet. Then there's usually one right here on the on the middle of the the girdle. That's usually it and sometimes there's one on the blade, the hilt of the blade as well as sometimes there's some of the, the decoration parts of the girdle so like here we've got three gems in the blue field so we're gonna put those Okay, and the tricky thing with gemstones is that they're uh, they stick out as detail from the rest of the model. So you have to try looking at the model from a bunch of different angles, or else you might only be painting the black on from certain angles, and then you'll miss it later. So there, the gemstones on the on the girdle, on the two sides of the knife on his head, and the eye lenses are all painted up. Okay, now we're going to get on to the second highlight for the whites, all the white cloth, and that is going to be Ulthuan Grey. On top of a Celestia Grey, the Ulthuan Grey is a really nice highlight because it's uh, not as, it's not like a pure white, but it's really really lighter than uh, any of the grays in the foundation so even though it says it's Ulthuan gray it's almost closer to to what white scar is so I'm kind of taking my hints of how to or where to put these brush strokes by looking at the way that the cloth falls on the model Trying to keep, trying to keep some of that that known oil in the recesses there, but still trying to get a good amount of this lighter color onto the flat surfaces. So it's it's a, it's a good idea to turn the model around in your hand and see where the where the grooves are, where the um, raised areas are, will kind of inform you on where to paint your your highlight colors. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy the most about uh, miniature painting is that because it's a 3D model uh, rather than like a flat canvas painting, you're able to see where the where the best angles are for highlighting and it's, it's a different kind of art form but I really like it obviously man I hope you guys are all doing well out there there's so much projects coming up so many people doing some some great work out there All right. Next, we're gonna uh, do our start on our second highlights, I believe. Uh, before we do that, we're gonna take corn red. We're gonna paint the bottom right halves of all of the gemstones. I've always thought that red was a good color for these gemstones because it's such a it's such a contrast from the other colors you usually see on an elf figure. What I'm trying to do is leave a little bit of the black paint in the upper left-hand corner of the gem. 
kind of making this like crescent shape. And you'll see as we highlighted it, or as we highlight the the gemstones, how that kind of affects the the way the light reflects. Okay, now let's get on to our second highlights for the cloak. It's gonna be Thunderhawk Blue on top of the Dark Reaper. So because this is the second highlight, you want even less paint on your brush. And if anything, this is going to be the one that you really feather on in shorter strokes because you don't want to make a glaring highlight. Here's the inside of the cloak here. Oops. I'm trying to do this effect of a diagonal, uh, the light catching the, the cloth at a diagonal, so it creates these brush stroke on effects, which I find very, very cool to look at. It's easier to blend too. Okay, and again we're going to do the second fold. In here, I'm not really touching the third and the fourth fold in the back because those are kind of all in shadow. So I'm going to leave those to create a little bit of a contrast. See how I thin down my paints and then I go up to three times over the same area with cloth, especially, that's something you can do. You don't have to do just one stroke of a highlight. And that'll really solidify the color for you. Here on the back, it's a little bit trickier because the there's so much area and there's so much uh, sh shadows. There's so many shadows here. So you're really going to have to pick and choose where you put these highlights. And a lot of it is also going to depend on where the known oil ended up drying. Sometimes you might want to, um, if you've got, if you should be using a wet palette, use um, using your your parchment paper to keep the the paint usable. And if you're not using a wet pa if you don't have parchment paper, even just taking one of these clamshells and putting some some paper towel inside or some napkins or some Kleenex. Actually, not Kleenex, sorry. You don't want to use Kleenex because uh, tissue paper for blowing our noses and stuff usually has some uh, skin kind of like lotion inside of it. 
and that what that does is that um, makes it difficult to mix your paints because it tends to make the, the paints all oily so you don't want to use tissue or Kleenex but if you're using a ghetto wet palette you don't have parchment paper on you then um, you definitely want to try using like just a regular paper towel anything that doesn't contain any kind of skin skin moisturizing lotion Okay, another tip, something that I often do is that if I'm painting a big area like this and I'm trying to do my diagonal uh, brush strokes but it's proving too difficult, I'll go from the top like this. And that way you can really see where those brush strokes land and it gives you good control. All right. I'm just gonna touch up the back of the hood. Hit all these high areas here. So now what it should look like is that your cloak is with the same highlight as the shirt underneath. Uh, it should look pretty similar, but the cloak underneath is had a base of the Thunderhawk blue. So it's going to look a little bit lighter than the cloak, which has got the base of Dark Reaper. <clears throat> Next color we're going to use is a uh, uh, Fenrisian Gray. Now for this, we're just going to really lightly line the edge of our cape. And we're only going to try to hit anything that really obviously sticks out in the light. So the highest areas, the highest raised edges here. And continuing with the Fenrisian Gray. It's really tricky being able to tell how much paint you need on your brush. You really don't need too much. Uh, you shouldn't be using too much because uh, again, we're just creating a high contrast for the eye to follow as it kind of picks out where the the shadows are. So I'm trying not to paint like thick lines, but I am trying to get a good consistent highlight on these edges here. Now this is different from, painting cloth is a lot different from painting like power armor in that you're a lot more, you have a lot more freedom, I think, to not have to worry about 
a certain kind of of brushstroke like it's really easy to just do diagonal swatches like what I'm doing here since there's no hard edge to cloth um, I found it easy to just kind of highlight really simply like there like you can see there and then um, if anything looks a little bit too invasive or too bright what I'll just do is go back over with the color I used underneath in this case Thunderhawk blue so this is just uh, fixing now just going back over what I just did and you just basically don't uh, don't want it to look unnatural right? that's mostly what all highlighting is just a natural progression of lighter colors okay you're going to use Fenrisian Grey though onto the um, shirt color. As well. So once it looks like you've got your cape, yeah, my cloak looks pretty good. I'm going to hit the shirt now. And this one you can be a little bit more uh, liberal with your use of the highlighting because the shirt is supposed to be lighter than the cloak. So whereas with the cloak we use the we use the Fenrisian gray as a light highlight for the shirt we're going to kind of make it more of a of a natural color. I have no idea what I'm saying. It's early in the morning. I'm just painting what feels right. It's all you can do really. Paint what feels right. Where have you been, Igor? Oh, I've just been marching with Papa. You know he's risen from the grave. I'm talking about Nagash. Yeah, big Papa. Alright. Should that should do it right there. Again, with all of these second highlights, um, you do not want to do too much. You want to do just enough so that the the eye can see it, um, and that it transitions well. You do not want to pull focus away from the colors you've been working so hard to paint underneath. Because if all we see is the highlight color, then there's like no point in, in the base colors. Your model looks too bright. Well, that's actually... <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, next color. A fist on red. For the gemstones. So now we're going to paint an even smaller surface area. So just like a really thin line, I'll show you here on the torso one. Really trying to stick to the, the edges of the gem and not the front. You want kind of that, that darker corn red to still be visible. Okay, now we're going to take Gehenna's Gold 
and I'm going to paint up the gold areas. So I like to start with, uh, when doing highlighted gold areas, I like to start with the top of the model and work my way down. So I hit the helmet crest and the shoulder blades. Gehenna's gold is a great color because it's a very yellow gold. So it's going to pop really nicely. Now when you're doing this center, his elf girdle, uh, you don't want to hit all of it. You're going to leave some of that Balthazar gold in in the shadows. So that again the light can kind of contrast with it. And here we are with the blade, the hilt. Okay at this point, um, sorry I thought I had the video recording but uh, I missed it actually. I took some Wild Rider Red and all I did was line the bottom of each of these rubies. So when you take it on your tip of your brush, you're just kind of feathering the paint onto the bottoms of each of these rubies. And combined with the other two red colors, what it does is creates the effect of light hitting the jewel at a certain angle. And then it uh, creates depth and shadows and natural highlights. And it's really good for painting. Okay, the next color we're going to use to uh, further enhance our gems is Ceramite White. I'm using Ceramite White, but you can actually use like any kind of white color, even going down to Ultuan Gray. If you're using the Games Workshop range, Ultuan Gray is a fantastic color for white. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do before we hit all of our gemstones is we're going to highlight up the cloth. And for this, we don't want the whole cloth to be to be white. We want to leave the darker areas there, the shadowed areas and just kind of create a little bit of of a uh, contrast with the light lightness of this white color. Ta-da! Also, you're going to just take the white and just feather it on these feathers. Hey! On the top and then also the bottoms of these uh, feathers. You're just going to drag our brush. Leave the middle that kind of gray color if you can because we're about to highlight and actually change the color of that in a section but you want this nice bright white color now what you're going to do with your ceramic white or your white scar or if you have the old skull white you can use that too is you're going to paint tiny little dots on all of your gemstones now the key when doing gem work is that you do the highlights on the lower right, on the lower lower left side, the bottom right side, and the upper right. So you can kind of see in this gem how we did it. And then you put in the black area, the area that's still black, a little white dot. Just like that. And what that's going to do is create the illusion of light reflecting off of the gemstone. You can choose whether to do it on all of them. If you feel like you've... Uh, one of the mistakes I made was that I... When I used to paint these red gemstones, 
I painted them and they were too uh, covered with red. There was no black spot for the white to go on. And when you paint the reflection on a colored area of the gemstone, it doesn't create the illusion of a reflection. So you want to make sure that there's still a little bit of black space. Let's zoom in right there to create that illusion of light reflecting. And the final piece you're going to do, which is really going to make it seem like the light is reflecting, you're going to take your art coat. Now, even if you're planning on sealing this miniature after you paint it with some art coat or gloss coat or whatever, putting a little bit on ahead of time on the gemstones is really a good way to give it a little bit of a kick. So you notice for these gemstones on the girdle, I did not paint a reflective white dot. And that's because I thought they were too small, so I just didn't do it. For everything else, I kind of wanted to add that little white reflective dot. And you just want to take your, take your brush and paint that gloss coat on so you can kind of see how it glistens in the light. Very cool stuff. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint Cantor Blue onto the feathers in the middle. Now this is something that I, if I'd seen it when I was looking at the Games Workshop versions, if, I, if I'd seen it, I would have done this in part one of the video in the base coast, but I, I didn't, I missed it. So we're just gonna do it now. And the goal is we want to get this nice dark blue color onto the centers of all of these white feathers. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just painting them on like that. Okay, the next color we're going to tackle is... See if you can find your Calador Sky. So easy. Thank you, Games Workshop, for keeping the similar paints labeled in similar themes. Like High Elves and uh, Lizardmen colors in the range are quite s similar in tone. You've got like your Temple Guard blue for your Lizardmen. But it's got more of a greenish tinge to it, whereas all these High Elf paints are more of a traditional blue color. All right, so there you go. Blue arrows, everything's all painted up. And that's, that will do it, I think. Let's just do one more highlight of Karak stone for the bow. And that will be it. The next video, what I'm gonna do is show you how I do the basing. So if you're interested in taking a look at how I did the basing for this guy, then uh, stay tuned gonna require a lot of or not a lot but three different products and uh, I'll show you a finished a finished model if I can find it. oh you know I think I'll just leave it until until the next one because I can't seem to find it around me all right thanks for watching everybody this is how to paint a high elf shadow warrior part two please stay tuned for part three where we're going to hit the base up Latest players!